we're going to start with our D chord. If you can, pay a little bit of attention to which string you're strumming, but you know, we're going to come back and have a closer look at that a little bit later. So don't be too worried if you hit all the strings all of the time. Just be aware of it. Know that later on you will need to pay more attention to it. As I said, we'll come back and pay closer attention to that in a later lesson. So we're starting with the D. For the moment we're going to do four down strums for each chord. So we have four for D, four for C add nine, four for G, and then back to D and we start the whole sequence again. So starting on D, after four, nice and slowly, two, three, four. So you have our D. These three chords make up Sweet Home Alabama. There are only three chords in the entire song. Verse, chorus, it's all the same. Now, Leonard Skinner had several guitar players and obviously recorded versions will sound a lot different when there are overdubs, whereas we're just one guitar playing the song. So, with those chords, it's the very basic skeleton of the song, but they are the three chords for the song, all the way through. Now, so we're more familiar with hearing. Okay, but they are the same three chords, so... I just played there was two beats for D, two beats for C add nine, and four for G, and that's what we'd like to do next. Okay, so that we can change chords a little bit sooner, and then four strums for the G, and that will give us the right amount of time for the rhythm that we want for the song. Okay, so let's give that a try. Now, if you're finding it difficult to change chords when we're doing four strums for each, obviously doing less strums is probably going to be a little bit harder for you. So make sure you go back, practice doing four strums for each chord and that you can change between each chord without any difficulty before you reduce the number of strums, otherwise it's just going to be too difficult. Now, also at this point it's going to be very important that the rhythm has to keep going has to keep moving no matter what. You cannot stop when you're changing chords to get ready. This is uh, usually in my classes we have a little bit of a, a joke about this where people will play something like this and stop and get their fingers ready and then stop again and oh yeah okay we have all those fingers there. can't go on stage or go to a party and play the song like that, expecting whoever's going to sing along to stop after two beats and wait for the next chord. So the rhythm has to keep going, no matter what. So even if your fingers on your left hand don't make the chord properly, you still have to keep strumming. Okay, so just for example, I'm not going to play the chords correctly with my left hand just to give you the idea of keeping the strumming going. So we have... Okay, not perfect by any 
any stretch. But at least the rhythm kept going. And that's going to be very important. So I want you to practice it like that. Make sure that the rhythm keeps going no matter what happens. Otherwise, I've seen this happen so many times. It becomes a habit. Every time you go to change chord, that you will stop. It just becomes ingrained. It's something that you have learned. Learned behavior. Every time I change chord, I must stop so that my fingers are in the correct position. Cannot do that. If you're starting at this stage, it's going to get very, very difficult later on to try and fix that. So, let's try it again. After four, starting with the D, two strums for D, two for C add nine, four for G, and then we start the whole sequence again. Okay, so after four, two, three, four, so we have D, C add nine, then G, after D, C add nine. Like I've said before in the other lessons, keep practicing that, make sure the rhythm keeps going, practice moving your fingers from one chord to the next, make sure that that becomes automatic, and then when you're ready, we'll move on to the next lesson.